I'm having another lesson in decorative wall painting from my friend Sherry Ringler. Sherry comes from Springfield, Ohio, and she's known in the trade as an itinerant wall painter. And Sherry is showing me in this newly refurbished room in my barn how to do a simulated wainscoting dado, like a, like a um, chair rail and paneling, and some very beautiful ivy stenciling above with a freehand decoration. So Sherry, can you please show us step by step and also explain all the materials necessary to um, achieve such a beautiful decorative finish? I'd be happy to. Great. Okay, first to the wall you have to apply two coats of alkyd base eggshell paint. I chose white for this project. Then you assess the size of the room and because we're going to cut the room in two with a chair rail, I chose 38 inches for this particular situation. 38 so inches from the from floor. The floor okay. From the floor. And to keep it straight, if you make a mark at each side of the wall that you're going to do at 38 inches and then you get a chalk line and strike yep. a straight line. Are you ready? I am ready. Takes two people to do this properly. And now we're going to put up masking tape and paint our base color for the faux bois. Faux bois is French for fake or false wood. Now, what kind of masking tape is this? I recommend Anchor Brand because it always comes back off. It's a good quality painter's masking tape. Also, before you get started doing the faux bois, tape off all your trim, and we have a heater here at the bottom, which I've already taped off, and, and go clear around the whole room doing that before you begin. Now I'm going to use another eggshell, alkyd base paint, and put a solid and opaque um, coat on the wall on the part where I'm going to do the faux bois and I picked with a fan deck I picked the uh, the lightest shade in the background of the wood that's on the floor. Okay, we're trying to match this pumpkin pine, this yellow yellow pine. Right. And then just paint the wall as you would. Show us how you roll. <laughs> well, What's your technique? Because I don't want anything seeping under this tape I go along the edge like that this direction. You should roll both directions whenever you're painting, so I go ahead and finish out the bottom of the room across and then my final roll marks are up and down. The paint is dried and now we have to remove this tape. It looks good. And now what, Sherry? Now I'm going to mark off the dado rail across just beneath the where we put the buttercream color here. And I have chosen a, a grouping of uh, measurements that, from looking at a realistic dado rail, that'll make that we can create the illusion that there is a dimensional dado rail here. And I do that by lights and shadows. So this is another step that takes a different day. I'm going to add the shadows now by measuring all the increments that I have uh, decided for my chair rail. And I make a mark at one eighth, and then an inch lower. This will be a highlight. That'll be a shadow. Move down to the bottom. This is the main part of the board. And a highlight and a shadow. I do that clear across the board and I'm going to use the Anchor Brand tape again and tape it straight across on my marks that I've made. And I'm going to create the medium shade and the dark shadow. We work, when we work in three degrees of shading. This is a technique called trompe l'oeil another French word, and it means to fool the eye. So, so we're creating illusion by the use of three shades. For the three shades of the faux bois, I used Japan colors to tempt my glazing liquid. Glazing liquid, you can buy it in a, in a paint store. The lightest shade is raw sienna, and it's a mixture of 40 parts glazing liquid, one part raw sienna Japan color, and a little bit of mineral spirits to make it so that it's flows like heavy cream. For the medium shade, I used burnt sienna of the Japan color in the same formula, 40 parts glazing liquid, um, one part Japan paint, and a little bit of mineral spirits. And for the dark color, I took some of the medium shade and added burnt umber Japan colorant to it, just to make it, just to tint it a little bit darker. Than the other. I didn't want it to be totally burnt umber. And that's what we use to create the shadows on the dado rail. 
I'm going to take the medium shade, which is the burnt sienna, and add it to here, and then strie through it with this, with my brush bristles. It takes very little glazing liquid to do this, and I need to get it on all of our exposed areas. But I can't add a lot, so it takes a lot of um, brushing because I don't want a lot of color on here. Good color though, it's very close to the floor. Now we're going to let this dry, the medium shade dry somewhat, but so as not to waste time, we're going to untape the, our bottom line here and go on with making the So you have a little tiny line. This, that will become a dark shadow. This is my secret striping tool, the Master Grainer, which which I'm going to create the lines that go up and down. The company that distributes these is MB in Springfield, Ohio. I put the glaze in, in the bottle and of course gravity controls it. That's why I can't use it when I go across. I have to use the tape lines still up there. You have to thin the glaze that we used, that we mixed earlier. I took the darkest shade because this is that's what I need and I, I thinned it with about, I took a small part of it and I made about one-third, added about one-third that amount to the so mixture of minerals. Heavy carrots. cream is more like half and half. Well, yeah, we're in the half and half now. And I use a spoon to fill this so I don't make a big mess. It's not an easy gizmo to do. And remember, keep it against that. Good job. Now we're taping off the rest of the shadow lines for the dado rail. And so now you're going to use which color? The very darkest shade. Using my same brush, you don't have to clean it out in between. That's the burnt umber? The burnt umber glaze. I'll start adding it to the... We have to be very cautious to just keep it on our narrow, narrow lines that we've created with the tape. And once we finish adding these, we can remove all the tape. But look how clear the stripe is. And now we have highlights and shadows. Now we're going to do the faux bois, the graining part of the faux bois, over what we've already put the just highlights and shadows. Right now, just okay. on the on there. First, we have to start by taping off the bottom and the top okay. with our safe release tape. Now we're going to add our wood grain to our highlights and shadows on the chair rail. First, we apply our medium shade that we mixed earlier, which is the burnt sienna glaze mixture. Apply it completely along the chair rail in a section that you can handle before it dries. It dries very quickly. It dries like very it. rapidly. So, so you can do, do maybe nice four or five feet along your chair rail and then you can blend back into your wet edge. So this is the medium tone. This is the burnt sienna. I want to use the flogger brush. You may use the flogger brush if you would like and create the background grain. Very good. You might want to wiggle that as you go so that it has a real grain look. Right. This is a heart grainer, and you can get it at any good hardware or paint store. It has the rubber pad on the wooden surface, and you create the heart grain by rotating this as you drag it along the chair rail. I'm going to start out right here, and I'm going to keep it along that bottom. Look at that. Oh, so you're going very slowly rot rotating. Oh, this looks wonderful. You rotate it at uneven intervals so you don't have something that looks like it's been stamped on. Now I'm going to apply the faux bois graining to the verticals, and I'm going to treat each one of these segments as if it's its own board, as it would be if it were real wood. And I'm going to start with our lightest shade, which we made from Sienna. I drag a little bit of the medium shade through there. Okay. Now, let me use that again. That, okay. And we'll put a half one on here. That looks excellent. It goes much faster with two people, too. Now, use the flogger and kind of wiggle it yeah, down we'll through this time. This a wavy grained pine. And now we're going to continue our wall project. I'm going to show you how to make a freeform stencil design to put around the door. What I've done is gone to the garden and I picked several different sizes, various sizes of ivy leaves, which makes it simple for someone who doesn't feel secure and able to draw them freehand. And then I've take, I'm going to take mylar. It's frosted on one side so that I can draw on it and shiny on the other side so that the paint when I stencil through it will slide and not stick to it. 
And to accommodate the leaf and leave a little bit of an edge around it, for the larger leaves I'm going to cut 3 inch squares, and for the medium sized leaves 2 inch squares, and for the extra large leaves like this, they'll be 4 inch squares. With the frosted side up so that I draw on it with a pencil, take one of your ivy leaves and trace around it. And with your uh, mylar down on the glass and your very your 60 degree point on your exacto knife, just cut what you traced. Once I've cut all my stencils, I put a little piece of masking tape on the on the same corner of each one, and I put them on. I tape them all to a piece of foam core scrap, and tape that entire thing to the wall so I can see my variety of leaves that I have to pick from when I'm working makes it convenient for me when I'm on the ladder. I don't have to keep going up and down. I'm using, again, I'm using the Japan colors. And I'm going to paint the vines in, which I will then put the different little stenciled ivy leaves over. And this is where I do it freehand. And once you've done that, choose the ivy leaves that you're going to use. Now I'm pretty far down on these vines, so I'm going to start with the medium sized leaves. And tape them on the on the vine. Once I've taped it, taped my little leaf stencil to the wall, I mix a color that's similar to real ivy and I have my ivy leaves here with me. There are a lot of different techniques in brushing, but I want all of my strokes to brush towards the the stem where the stem would be on the leaf. So once I get my my stencil completely filled, then I brush over it towards the center so that it has a feeling of a real leaf. And then I remove the stencil. And once you've completed putting all your leaves on, you take your little lining striping brush again and some of the vine color and connect your leaves to the vine with stems. Well, Sherry, thank you so much. We've learned how to faux bois and stripe on the lower wall. So it really does, to me, look exactly like wainscoting. And we've learned how to do this beautiful freehand stenciling of ivies. It's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And next time I'll show you how to do faux marble. I would love to learn. I'm sure everybody out there would love to learn, too. Come back soon. I will. <laughs>